C.D. Lamb is the deep man. One of the great offensive players in the nation. Cameron Dicker will send it away. Texas, OU, Red River, and here we go. They kick it to the far side. T.J. Pledger will run it. Pledger crosses the 30 and gets up to the 35-yard line. And that brings on Jalen Hurts from Houston, senior, transferred from Alabama. He's played in big games like this, national championships, played in the Iron Bowl against Auburn, and he is so excited and ready to face Texas in this football game. And this is such a unique environment. Very interested to see how he plays early in this game. Remember, it was early in the game last year when Kyler Murray made a couple of mistakes, put the Sooners behind the Longhorns with a couple of turnovers. Kennedy Brooks in the backfield, and they give it to him running right with a lot of running room. Gets to the 40. First down and more. Kennedy Brooks, the redshirt sophomore from Mansfield, Texas, stopped by Jawan Mitchell after a gain of 23. Every defensive coordinator I talk to says the same thing about Oklahoma. They say the best thing Lincoln Riley does is the run game. They all talk about the air raid and the passing game and the explosiveness, but the most difficult thing to stop when you face the Sooners is this potent rushing attack. So a gain of 23, first down and 10. OU staying on the ground. Brooks once again. Kennedy Brooks did not play at Kansas last week after suffering a minor injury against Texas Tech the previous week. But he seems back and healthy here. And speaking of health, this Texas defense, Gus, missing three players out of their secondary, and that's a pass defense that has struggled mightily this year. 126th in the country out of 130 defending the pass, and they're going up against the most explosive offense in our sport. Kennedy Brooks, Jeremiah Hall lined up in the backfield and a quick flag. Early movement on the left tackle. Ball start. Offense. Number 77. It's a five-yard penalty. Second down. It's Eric Swenson. Swinson missed some time last week. He had to be filled in for by R.J. Proctor, but now he is back. He is healthy. There was some speculation that he was not going to be able to go this week, but he is healthy and on the field, but a little early start on that last play. Second down and 11. Opening series for Oklahoma at the 44. And they'll run it straight ahead. This is Jalen Hurts who slides down. Jalen Hurts at quarterback. He has terrific size and he leads this team in rushing. And he's such a great runner. I mean, he really is a slasher. You know, not not like what Kyler Murray was. Murray was more explosive in particular, like in, in short spaces. But Jalen Hurts is great between the tackles. And on a play like this, Gus, on a conversion opportunity, this is when you've got to be aware of the legs of Jalen Hurts. He's 6'2", 220 pounds, third and five after the six-yard game. At the 38. Out of the gun. Hurts. Steps up in the pocket. Wants to run it. He has a first down and more. Stutter steps and finally knocked out of bounds after picking up 11 yards. Jalen Hurts showing the great legs already. You're going to get man-to-man -man defense, and as OU runs a crossing route from the left, watch how the left side of the field is wide open. Now Hurts can just take it right up the field, get the conversion, easy read for the quarterback as he saw that defense fast flow all the way to his right. Jalen Hurts 31-2 and as a starter, 26-2 and at Alabama, 5-0. and To start his career at Oklahoma, first and 10 of the 27. And Hurts again, straight ahead, and he'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Graham, Taquan Graham, and Brandon Jones defensively for Texas. This OU team, Gus, they are so good early. Lincoln Riley does a great job formulating the early first quarter game plan. They have scored 62 points in the first quarter so far this season. That is the top mark in the country, and you're seeing a quality drive put together here on their first series of the game. Lincoln Riley, one of the great coaches in America, and he turned 36 years old last month. Fifth youngest coach in FBS. Second and 10 of the 27. Hurts fired to the far side. Bobbled and caught. Basquin and Nick Basquin. Hauled it in. Fifth-year senior gained 17. 
Oklahoma moving and grooving early on. I tell you what's very interesting. Texas has gone almost exclusively with man-to-man -man defense on the outside. And when that happens, tackling becomes so important in those one-on-one -on -one matchups. There, Basquin was able to break the tackle of Deshaun Jameson and get the first down and create this early inside the 10 scenario for Oklahoma. First down and goal at the 10-yard line. And it's Hurts looking, pulls it down, scrambles, decides to run it, now backs up, lets it fly, incomplete. C.D. Lamb, the intended receiver in the corner, covered by Brandon Jones. That is what is so difficult about these quarterbacks. You're going to see it from Sam Ellinger when Texas has the ball as well. Their ability to extend plays. Coach was talking about it in the pregame. Hurts right there. Texas does everything right defensively, and yet he's still able to get a chance at a touchdown late by extending the play out. But a great job by that Texas defense forcing him to throw it late. Second and goal of the 10. Kennedy Brooks in the backfield once again for OU. Hurts. Sprints out. Wants to run it. Tries to turn it up. Not a lot of room and he finally goes down. Terrific open field tackle. B.J. Foster. Now Foster, one of Texas's most ferocious hitters in the secondary, called out Jalen Hurts this week. He's not dumb, Foster said. When he runs, he's going to have to slide or he's going to get hurt. Third down and goal at the nine. Got to be aware of their best player. Their best player, number two, C.D. Lamb, in the slot at the bottom of your screen. Rambo is the wide receiver at the bottom. Lamb in motion. Hurts looks for CD in space. CD breaks it back. CD on his feet and knocked out of bounds around the two and a half yard line. Chris Brown gets him to the turf. And Oklahoma has to make a decision. And B.J. Foster, who is out there as the safety, trying to bring him down. He is down and writhing in pain. He's the one right there that kind of has that arm kind of tugged back when C.D. Lamb spun around him as he dives and gets that ball all the way to the one-yard line. What an incredible effort by C.D. Lamb. And this would not be good for Texas if B.J. Foster has to miss any extended time. Again, they're already without three secondary player, players, Jalen Green and Josh Thompson, two corners, Caden Stearns, an incredible safety. And now B.J. Foster, who's another one of these young, incredible safeties, just a sophomore. He's missed two games this year with a hamstring injury. But it looked like he was grabbing up at his upper body when C.D. Lamb, Gus, kind of wrenched that arm back when he spun him back to the inside. B.J. Foster picked off Austin Kendall, former Oklahoma quarterback, last week when they played West Virginia for the third of Texas's four interceptions. Coach T, Tom Herman, and this is like an Urban Meyer mental game. Coach Herman coached for Urban Meyer at Oklahoma as his offensive coordinator. Coach Alex Grinch coached last year for Coach Meyer, the defensive coordinator for OU, Coach Beck. I mean, everybody coach for Urban Meyer. I think I'm going to be his running backs coach if he ever goes back into football. Uh, no, no, no. He's, uh, he's, he's good on our desk. Okay. Let's keep him there. Okay. He's doing just fine. You know, see that, that left arm has that brace. Folks, that brace that you see on B.J. Foster's left bicep, that's actually attached to his shoulder pads and his shoulder so that his arm cannot get reached above the shoulder area. So that tells me that he's got some sort of issue with that shoulder. And that was the arm that got wrenched back around as C.D. was running for the touchdown. And Hertz is back on the field. Gus, OU, fourth down, going for it here early. Fourth down and goal at the one. Oklahoma three of three on fourth downs this season. Trey Sermon, six feet, 216 pounds with Hertz. Remember, Hertz has great legs. He'll run it to the right side on the move. Touchdown, OU. CD for the TD.
Just a quick route out to the outside. But watch number 14, Charleston Rambo. He sets this up by getting inside and almost creating a pick that is not actually a pick. Now the defender's got to run over the top. That was Brandon Jones. He's too late. Touchdown Sooners. 19th catch of the year for C.D. Lamb. He scored a touchdown in eight straight games. Extra point is good. Oklahoma goes on a 10-play, 66-yard drive on their first. Gabe Burkett will kick it away. Devin Duvernay, the senior, the deep man for Texas. Duvernay comes up to field it. He'll start from the one-yard line. Duvernay with the seam. Duvernay, very good return as he crosses the 35-yard line, and that will bring on Sam Ellinger. This guy is a winner. He's a competitor, and he does not get the credit he deserves for his ability to throw the ball, in particular, outside the numbers and down the field. And that's what I expect to see today early, is Texas threaten these secondary players from OU with the tall wide receivers on the outside. Sam Ellinger. 6'3", 230 pounds, a junior from Austin, on first down at his own 32. Ellinger fires it out wide, Duvernay, and Duvernay chopped down, great open field tackle. Turner Yell, Delarian, the sophomore from Hempstead, Texas. And this Texas offense is going to get one of their main weapons back today. Colin Johnson, we talked about it earlier in the pregame show. He's back after that hamstring injury. Again, they will go down the field to Colin Johnson all the time today. A loss of two, second and 12. Ellinger underneath. Duvernay again. Whoa! I don't know if that's a face mask, but he got grabbed around the head by Kenneth Murray. No flag on the play. Wow, no flag. Where is that left hand? Tell you what, that is a pretty good no call. That hand is on the jersey under the face mask. Now it remember, it's touch the face mask. It's not just the face mask. If you pull the helmet or any part of the helmet, that can also be called. But they deemed that that hand was lower than the face mask and the helmet itself. Third down at 12 of the 30. Empty backfield for Ellinger. Sam under pressure. Ellinger sack. All right, how about this? Alex Grinch defense, Neville Gallimore getting to the quarterback. Texas three and out. There was one question about this team coming into this season, and really for the last couple of seasons, it has been can this defense improve to a level where this offense can go and compete for a national championship. The offense has been the best in the country for three straight years. The defense is trying to answer and pull their own weight. We find out today if it's the truth. And on the first series, it certainly was. So Texas will have to punt it deep. Buczewski sends it away. Lamb the deep man. And C.D. Lamb makes a first man miss and gets clobbered at midfield. Woo! 36-yard punt. Six-yard return. A lot of hard hitting going on already. Time now for progressive insurance game flow. Well, Gus, it has been an easy relationship building between C.D. Lamb and Jalen Hurts. We saw that last touchdown. Now, in talking to both of these guys, they said it was a pretty immediate connection. Now, C.D. has told me Jalen has pushed him. He's also pushed this entire offense because they feed off the energy. We saw what Jalen said about playing in this rivalry. He said, I've played in big games, and that is how this entire Oklahoma team is approaching it. Quick injury update, guys. B.J. Foster is expected back. He did have that shoulder evaluated. He's good to go. All right, thank you very much. Oklahoma takes over with great field position at the 44. Hurts looking, delivers to the sideline. He's got an open receiver. C.D. Lamb once again. And who could forget the combination of C.D. Lamb and Marquise Brown last year for this Oklahoma team? Man, his mom calls him Hollywood. I'm going to call him Hollywood. <laughs> Man, you keep saying it's Marquise. Marquise, we know you're watching Hollywood. Gus still waiting for that jersey. That's right. First down and 10 to the 39. Hurt scrambling. Dumps it off. Kennedy Brooks, and he'll be tackled 
behind the line of scrimmage by Chris Brown. Now Texas has made an adjustment that entire first series they went with man to man coverage in the secondary. Now they've gone to a zone coverage trying to get in front of Lincoln Riley as a play caller. That's something that defensive coordinators always talk about is it's hard. You start chasing Lincoln Riley you're chasing his plays and his concepts and then he's ahead of you and you can never catch up. So right now Texas trying to change it up with Todd Orlando the defensive coordinator and get in front of Riley as a play caller. Trey Sermon, TJ Pledger in the backfield. Play action. Hurts off his back foot. And that ball is caught. Charleston Rambo, the redshirt sophomore from Cedar Hill, Texas. He has the potential to be the next great receiver at OU. Boy, what great ball placement. I, that was tough to see if we, he actually got in with that left foot because he was kind of in between steps. But it does create a scenario here where Jalen Hurts. The previous play is under further review. Yeah, they're going to take a look, and, and I'm not surprised because that was awfully close on the sideline. And it's certainly a big catch because Gus, as I always talk about, you know, third and five looks like. Boy, that's tough to tell. You'd always rather have third and five. Oh, great look here. This is the camera on the hat of our linesman. What an incredible look right there. And that foot clearly inbounds. What control. I tell you what, the ball placement. You see him dip down sidearm like he's a shortstop turned in a double play. Jalen Hurts from the pocket. And Rambo with great body control and the awareness of where his feet are to catch the ball with his hands, concentrate, and get that left foot down in the field of play. And Rambo burst under the scene against Alabama in the college football playoffs when he caught three balls for 74 yards, including a 49-yard touchdown. Charleston has three 100-yard receiving games this season. And he was really the impetus for why Lamb had such a big day against Texas Tech. After further review, the Willie on the field is confirmed it is a catch. You can see Mike DeFee has continued his hard work in the weight room. <laughs> He's jacked. You ain't lying. And when you know you're going to have an emotional game, send the guns in. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and five to 34 oh, for Oklahoma. You went with guns out. I like it. <laughs> Hurts. Rolling. Running. First down. Hurts still on the move and down at the 13. Lost it after 21 yard gain. But they say he was down. Anthony Cook with the tackle. Jalen Hurts gashing the Texas defense. Watch this man coverage again, and they send a pressure, which means there's no spy for the quarterback. All he had to do is that little pump. He got that pump. Jamison can't come off of his player. And then at the end of the run, you see that ball start to come loose, and it was certainly loose as he was going down to the ground, which means if there was a clear recovery, which there was by Texas, and this bit gets reviewed. I fully expect this to be Texas ball after this review. That ball was certainly coming loose, and there was a clear recovery by Texas in the immediate course of play. As Jamison was coming in number five and got that ball. Absolutely, that ball was coming loose. Hurts losing control before he went down. No doubt about it. Anthony Cook came in with the initial hit, number four. Helmet right on that elbow. The ball starts to come loose. There he loses control. No body part yet on the ground. And then Jamison right there for the immediate recovery. Gus. Oklahoma has turned it over only four times this season. Two fumbles and two interceptions. Boy, what a huge play that was going to be. It was going to set them up again inside the 15. After the three and out on defense, Mike Pereira 
Our rules analyst is with us here in the booth. Mike, you see anything that would allow this to stay with OU? I see it the way you see it, Joel. Listen, he loses control of the ball. Now to regain it, once he gets control, he has to hold on to it when it hits the ground. And it doesn't. It pops out immediately. So I see it exactly the way you do. And the big issue is there is a clear recovery. After reviewing the play, the ball came loose prior to the runner being down. It'll be Texas's ball at the seven yard line. Please set the game clock to 620, 620. Texas continuing to force turnovers. Four picks last week against crowds that SMU running back drew during the late 40s. First and 10 at the seven. After the turnover, Texas is Keontae Ingram running the ball. He's been dinged up, but back in the game right now. And this, this Texas team needs a little positive momentum on this series. They've got to move the chains, not just for field position, but also for their confidence. When you're backed up like this inside your own 10, the goal of a series like this is get two first downs. Get out from the shadow of your own goal line so that you can punt the ball and reestablish the field position for the rest of the quarter. After the two-yard gain, second and eight at the nine. Ellinger throwing it underneath and caught Duvernay. Devin Duvernay, the senior. And it's interesting, coming into this game, C.D. Lamb had 18 catches. Duvernay with 45. Duvernay is such a good player. He's always open, leads the nation with those nine catches a game. First down and 10 to the 18, Ellinger. And incomplete. Deontay Ingram took his eyes off the football. Kenneth Murray in coverage. And when they need a first down, they go to Duvernay. He is our one to watch, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Devin Duvernay, those nine catches a game, 463 yards, four touchdowns. He leads the country with those nine catches a game. And Gus, he also on third down has 15 catches just on third down alone. That also leads the country. Recently named the sixth team captain. Second and 10 of the 18. Option. Ellinger keeps it. Ellinger, nice feet. Sam Ellinger, 230 pounds. He is not afraid of contact. Terrific runner as John Michael Terry finally brings him down. Yeah, and this, this offense is doing exactly what they've needed to do, but now on a third down, where are they going to look? I just told you, 15 catches for Devin Duvernay. Bottom of your screen in the slot. Third down and four, the 24. Ellinger delivers underneath first down UT. Nice throw. Great catch. And this time it's Eagles with the reception. Terrific timing here and ball placement right when Ellinger hits his back foot. Boom, that ball is out, and it's right on the face mask of Brendan Eagles. He's 6'4", 225 pounds. All of these receivers span for Texas. They are monsters on the outside. First down at the 30. Play fake. Ellinger steps into his throw and delivers a dart. Colin Johnson, look at the run after the catch. All 6'6 six, six of him. Kenneth Murray had to track him down from behind after a 22-yard gain. I love how Ellinger first has time to work in the pocket, but then as he is reading this field, he gets the safety to move in the middle of the field, and then right there, boom, he's got his eyes right on Colin Johnson, and he's able to throw that ball on time and on target, and it allows Johnson the ability to run after the catch. First down of the 48. Texas finding some rhythm now, and they'll swing it out. Duvernay looking for room, and Duvernay taken down again by Turner Yell. I like the way these secondary players are tackling for Oklahoma. Well, that's a big question for them. Uh, they were 
I mean, no way around it. They were awful in the open field last year tackling, and that's something that Alex Grinch has talked about, that he wants maximum effort and the ability to bring them down in space, and they're doing that much better so far this season. Roshan Johnson in the backfield at running back. They give it to him, the converted quarterback. Pat Fields goes low and brings him down after four-yard gain. This kid's very talented. Well, there's no doubt about it. He comes in as a four-star quarterback recruit, but because of injuries decimating that running back room, he goes over there in preseason camp, and he's become a really good piece of this offense in the backfield. But this is quarterback time. Third down, your quarterback's got to step up and make a play. Third down and six at the 44. Johnson remains in the game as the pistol back. And they got it. Hit. And Ellinger will be tackled for a loss. Kenneth Murray got to him first. And that brings up fourth and long. Here he comes just on the blitz from this side. They're trying to pull that guard. And number 75, Junior Angilau does not see the pressure. Murray's got a free run, and Ellinger's got virtually no chance in the backfield. So Texas has to punt it away. Buczewski standing at his own 40-yard line. C.D. Lamb is the deep man. Lamb inside the 10. End over end kick. Bounces backwards. Oh, what a kick by Buczewski. It'll be downed at the five. He's got some English on that football. A 41-yard punt. And it'll pin OU deep in their own territory. Sooners with a 7-0 lead. Every Texas OU game since 1929. The Cotton Bowl in Big D. First and 10 at the five-yard line. So Texas flips the field. They did a great job there. That's the exact goal. You would love to score points, but they reestablished field position and now pinned Oklahoma deep in their own end. Sooners from the five. Hurts just trying to give his team some room. Jalen Hurts starts the game 6 of 7, 48 yards. He also has 45 rushing yards. Just thrown a touchdown. Jamari Chisholm with the tackle for Texas. He cut off those sleeves. Look at that sleeve. He was wearing long sleeves. He had a fumble on the last series. Look at those sleeves. They cut him off on the sideline. I'm sure he thought that they were a bit slippery when he was trying to run with the football. Now he's got better grip as a runner. Interesting. Second down and seven at the eight-yard line. Here is Brooks around the left side of the first down. Oklahoma running downhill. Terrific run, and that's a gain of 14 yards. Check out this block right here. This is Kennedy Brooks, and he's actually going to come out, and he's going to hook the support player in the Texas defense. That's number 15, and that block is what gets him the corner. It's a terrific job. A little mess right there. You can tell Hertz was reading it. Brooks is able to get the corner. Jeremiah Hall with the block on the edge. Creates a first down. Three carries, 43 yards for Brooks. First down. At the 22, Oklahoma with some breathing room. Hurts will swing it out. C.D. Lamb trying to make people miss, and he will not. Joseph Osai with the tackle in the open field. Joseph Osai is one of the guys that Texas has talked about this year, and specifically this week as a guy that they think is playing the best football on this defense. He's got 29 tackles on the year, a couple of sacks, and there you see his ability in space, even against the very dangerous C.D. Lamb. And Joseph Osai making his mark on this game as a sophomore. Young man was born in 7-0, thus Joel, Jenny, and Mike Pereira. With you, second down and 11 at the 21. Hurts steps up in the pocket, in trouble, breaks contain, tries to get outside, and does. Jalen Hurts, another huge chunk of yards, a seven yard pickup. Brandon Jones defensively for Texas. And again, that, that zone defense now for Texas, when they've run man-to-man -man coverage and Hurts gets outside of the pocket, extends the play, and creates, he has gashed them in the run game. So that has forced Texas to play zone. Look for OU now to try to get over the top 
and get down the seams of the hash marks of the middle of the field. Third down and four at the 28-yard line. Hurts. Runs again, and another first down. Jalen Hurts making people miss. Stiff arming. Gets down inside the 50. A 22-yard gain. Keandre Colbert finally with the tackle. Check out the move Hurts puts on Chris Brown, number 15, right here. Bam, outside, uh-uh. Gives him that left leg, takes it away, gets back inside, and creates a first down. Look at that dead leg right there. Jalen Hurts, that slashing style runner where every cut Gus is vertical and up the field. Plant and go. That's why he's so dangerous in the open field. First down and 10 at midfield. They'll run it. Pledger. Pledger returning after a hand injury. And all these running backs for Oklahoma, they don't get a lot of carries, but when they do, they're effective, averaging over seven yards per carry. I mean, you've got Ramondre Stevenson. We haven't even seen him. He, he averages 11 yards per carry. Hertz averages 8.8 .8 yards per carry. Kennedy Brooks, 8.2. Trey Sermon, 7.7. .7. I mean, it's absurd, the production from the run game that every single one of these backs has. And that's a credit to those five guys up front, the offensive line for Oklahoma. Hurts already, eight carries, 77 yards. Second and five of the 45. Looking, Hurts in trouble again. Another first down as he slides down. And his ability to run the football is the X factor for this OU team. It really is, and in particular when Texas does everything right. Check out the coverage in the back end. Hertz has nowhere to go with the ball. There's that zone defense I was talking about. Everybody sinking back for Texas. Now Hertz, he sees the opening. Here's a great shot from the umpire cam. Run the hat of that umpire. Hertz knows where the sticks are, gets the line to gain, and then goes down. A gain of six, first down at the 39 for Oklahoma. Hurts finds C.D. Lamb in space, turns it up, first down OU. C.D. Lamb breaks it across the field, still on the move, and finally dropped at the 12. C.D. Lamb slashing away for 26 yards. Deshaun Jamison finally stops him. When you've got a guy that can get all the way outside. Look, the defense doesn't see him. No one runs with C.D. Lamb. He's wide open on the outside. Easy read for Jalen Hurts. He delivers it to the electric Lamb, who creates a first down inside the 15. And they'll run it. Brooks. Not a lot of room on that right side. Nicely done. Joseph Asai drops it. We haven't even gotten to, it's been such a fast-paced game, we haven't even gotten to the fact that OU is without their all-Big 12 tight end, Grant Calcaterra. And this is where they tended to target the tight end, whether it was Mark Andrews when he was here, or Grant Calcaterra last year. The red zone is where they would target those guys, so they are without Calcaterra. That means Lee Morris, the former walk-on number 84, is a guy that's going to have to come up big in the red zone. Morris with... Ten career touchdowns, second and eight at the 11. They look in the corner, lamb incomplete. That one thrown behind him. Anthony Cook on defense for Texas. What a huge play here for the Texas defense. Can they force a field goal opportunity? And if you can do that in the Big 12, you're winning. You're absolutely right. And this is a chance for this defense to try to get themselves off the field, force a kick. I would expect some type of pressure here from Texas in the face of Jalen Hurts. And you're going to see all the linebackers start to walk up towards that line of scrimmage. 11th play of the drive that started at the OU 5. Third and... Texas called a timeout before that flag was thrown. Todd Orlando was asking for a timeout very early on the sideline. Texas takes his first timeout. And he'll get it. Seven to nothing, Oklahoma leading in three. Third down and eight at the 11. OU with 204 yards and a little over a quarter. 
Yes, I think you're going to know whether Lincoln Riley would go for it on fourth down or not based on this play call. If they run it here, he's trying to get within two or three yards to go for it on fourth. If they throw it, he'll likely kick a field goal if it's incomplete. Here's Hurts under pressure. Hurts taking his time. Throws. Intercepted. Texas has it. Chris Brown. Second turnover of the game. And that Texas defense bending but not breaking. Brandon Jones. What an incredible job by Chris Brown. And it's actually Jones who comes off of his wide receiver late and gets back across the middle. The ill-advised throw from Hertz throws late back across the middle of the field. And there's Jones, the senior, the leader of this defensive secondary, the stable one, the guy that they have said has been flying around making the most plays in the secondary of anybody and makes a huge one there. So Texas takes over at their own 10. And they'll run it. Johnson picks up a couple. And what's the difference in this Texas defense this season? They're forcing some great turnovers. Well, they've, they've got some great athletes back there. And you know, turnovers a lot of times are a, a matter of effort. And it certainly was there. Ellinger. Flips it out into the flats. Johnson, and he's wrestled down at the line of scrimmage. Kenneth Murray. How about Kenneth Murray? Check out this reaction. Watch Kenneth Murray just sprint from his linebacker spot. Immediately, when you see that back go out, he's going out there and boom, wraps him up in the open field and creates that great play on the outside. This guy is fast and one of the best tacklers in the country. And now they've got a great chance to force Texas into a punting situation. Kenneth Murray, preseason Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, third down and 10. At the 10, Ellinger, empty backfield with time, delivers, and caught for first down. Colin Johnson, they love having him back. A 14-yard gain for the senior from San Jose, California. And I love how Colin Johnson forces the defensive back to turn and run, and then as soon as he flips his head, boom, he just drops out of it, creates a massive amount of space, and he's there for an easy completion and an easy conversion. Arnell Motley covering for Oklahoma, first and 10 of the 24. Rashawn Johnson, the freshman, in the backfield with Ellinger. You get the feeling that Sam's getting ready to let this football fly. Ellinger to throw. Ellinger goes deep. Ellinger! Incomplete at the 40. Wow, great throw. Jake Smith just couldn't hold on. Delarian Turner yell in his hip pocket. A decent job by Turner yell of getting his hand just barely right into the arms of Jake Smith, a tremendous true freshman who plays in the slot. And that was an unbelievable throw from Sam Ellinger. That was in a perfect spot. Jake Smith with four touchdown catches in the season's first five games, second and 10 to the 24. Ellinger, quarterback, draw and nothing. Oh, you ready, prepared, motley. And a loss of one. And you know, we saw that one shot taken down the field, and that shot was taken to Jake Smith. I got to assume that they've got to go back down the field here. Even on a third and long, rather than just get the line to gain, you're going to see them start taking some shots, and one might pop up right here. Texas has to test the Oklahoma secondary. They've been the weak spot on this team for the last couple of years. Third and 11. Sam Ellinger rolling. And Ellinger turns it up. Kenneth Murray says, not on my watch. And Texas will have to punt it away. How about the closing speed 
of Kenneth Murray. Ellinger's got a huge gap. Look where Murray's at right there. He's way behind the play, and he's still got to get all the way out to his right and make the tackle, and he closes like a bullet. Kenneth Murray is playing some football. Was that Kenneth Murray we were with in the elevator that day we were at Oklahoma? Yes, the massive. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what? Yes, that man was running that fast on the field. Oh, jeez. So on fourth down, Texas punting and a whistle prior to the snap. Flag on the play. Prior to the snap, false start. Kicking team number 44. The five-yard penalty, fourth down. Tom Herman, 43 years old, third year in Texas. He's done some amazing things with this Longhorns team. After a 7-6 and six record, they beat Georgia in the Sugar Bowl, finished number nine in the final polls a season ago. Disappointed in their loss to LSU, a game they feel sh they should have won. Lamb from the 36. And he's upended at the 41-yard line. Great special teams coverage by the University of Texas. Montrell Estelle with the special teams tap. But they're going to go up against three of the best starting pitchers, at least in one rotation in all of the major leagues. They fake the reverse, and Texas was ready. Stevenson running, but Anthony Cook chops him down for a loss of six. What a great tackle in the open field. A little bit of that fake like you called. And Ramondre Stevenson, he comes in at about 235, 240. And so Cook has got to go low. And he does a great job of wrapping that outside hand around the knees and tripping up Stevenson and getting him on the ground. Second down and long for Jalen Hurts, who's turned it over twice already in the first half. Hurts riding his running back straight ahead and is tackled from behind. At the 45. I'm really interested to see how Jalen Hurts reacts here as he faces really the first adversity of his season and his career at Oklahoma. Two big turnovers, now a big third down. He's got to make a play. Did Texas get off the field is the question. Third and seven at the 45. Versions. Trey Sermon in the backfield with Jalen Hurts. Hurts. Lobs one up, incomplete. C.D. Lamb, closest man to the football, but there is a flag on the play at the near side, 46. Gus, I kind of think this is going to go against Oklahoma. What, they're trying to run crossing routes, and from the right side, it looked like to me, they're trying to pick C.D. Lamb's man. Look at 84, Lee Moore. See how he goes in there and Pass shoves him? Offense number 84. A penalty's declined. Fourth down. Not only that, but Joseph Osai with the pressure, number 46, got to Hurts and got that right arm before he could follow through. That's why that ball came out so high and awkwardly. But Lee Morris, number 84, called for that pick in the middle of the field. Great call by the official. Oklahoma punting for the first time. Deshaun Jameson is the deep man. Not a very good punt. Out of bounds around the 35, a 21-yard punt. Time now for a T-Mobile game break. Number three, Georgia has won 15 straight against the SEC. He's trailing in the second quarter against South Carolina. DeAndre Swift will go in for one yard out to give Georgia the lead, but Parker White just kicked a 49-yard field goal. They're tied at 10 in the second quarter. Got to Gus and Joel at the Cotton Bowl. Well, Georgia had a bit of an emotional win last week on the road against Tennessee. Tennessee played... One of their better games. I know Georgia scored 33 straight points, kind of pull away in that game, but it was a physical game. And then you come right back, you're playing another conference opponent. It's an early game. And they came out a little sluggish. Right now, what you're seeing is at this Red River game, <laughs> Gus, we thought we were going to see a shootout. We're seeing a defensive battle play out <laughs> between OU and Texas. 
A bit surprising in particular that Texas has not found a better rhythm on offense with Sam I am Ellinger as their trigger man at quarterback. Ellinger seven of nine 50 yards similar to the game last week against West Virginia in Morgantown Texas was down seven to nothing at one point first down and ten Ingram. Keontae Ingram with a seven yard pickup at Fields with the tackle. Trying to establish that run game and that physical nature of that offensive line. These five guys up front have started every single game this season. Cosme at left tackle, probably their best, but that's something that Tom Herman said was the strength of their team was their offensive line. And here when they need it, they went right there to the run game, tried to establish some toughness and some rhythm. Second and three at the 31. Bobble, Ellinger picks it up, and he'll scramble to just get out of bounds. Did he get it away? He just tried to shovel it out of bounds in the vicinity of a receiver. This is something that their center, Zach Shackelford, has struggled with all season long against LSU. The snap always going to the left, or excuse me, to the right of the quarterback. The flag has come out. Looks like they're going to... was outside the pocket. However, the ball he threw did not get to the line of scrimmage. Therefore, it's intentional grounding. Lost it down at the spot of the foul. Third down. Sam tried to just flip it, Gus, like you said, kind of shovel it forward. But remember, even when you're outside of the pocket, it's got to get back to the line of scrimmage. That blue line is the line of scrimmage. Here he is running and just kind of flips it. And it went out of bounds well before that line of scrimmage as Kenneth Murray was giving chase to Sam Ellinger. So if that makes it third down and nine of the 25, Texas two of five on third down conversions. Four receiver package for Ellinger. Ingram in the backfield. Ellinger. And Ellinger will be sacked by Pat Fields out of nowhere. The sophomore from Tulsa. Third sack of the day for OU. And I like the way this defense is playing for Oklahoma. And the coverage on the outside, Gus, that's really where this started. There was nowhere to go with the ball, and that allows the safety to come all the way up and get the pressure on Sam Ellinger. And Fields was able to get home because of the coverage on the outside. Nowhere to go with the ball. Nice job by these DBs getting their hands on the wide receiver. Maybe some grabbing that was... Not called on the outside, but Fields gets home for the sack. Ryan Buczewski punts from inside his own five. C.D. Lamb hovering around the 40. Buczewski gets it away. Lamb. Fair caught at the 45, a 38-yard punt. And a flag. A flag on the play. We'll stay right here. Ellinger. Dejected as he walks off the field. Oklahoma has been issued a sideline warning. That's their first of the game. Media timeout. All right, we'll step away. Seven to nothing. Oh, you get it again. Right after this, hang out at the Texas State Fair. Eat a turkey leg. I, didn't I see you eating a turkey leg yesterday, Joel? Well, uh, well there might have been a fried Snickers in there. Fried as well. Snickers. <laughs> Love it. First down and 10 at the 45 for Jalen Hurts, who's turned it over twice. A fumble and an interception. OU with great field position at the 45. Stevenson in the backfield. They give it to him. Slashing ahead. Tripped up. As he crosses the line, Stevenson will gain a couple on the play. Should have been more. He was actually tripped up by his own guy, Marquise Hayes, the guard, 54, who was pulling around. Stevenson wasn't quite patient enough and tripped over his back heel. We would have gained four or five yards. Second and eight. Hurts sliding, delivers. Hurts caught. CD stays in bounds. A little jitterbugging, and he gets to the 30-yard line. 
C.D. Lamb continuing to have a big first half. Six catches, 73 yards, and a touchdown. So difficult for the defensive back to try to stay with a player like C.D. Lamb. He came all the way across the formation on that deep over route, and after the heavy play action, he was open for Hurts in the back end. First down of the Texas 31 for Oklahoma. 3.20 to go in the first half. Here's the handoff. Stevenson breaking tackles. It'll get down to the Texas 15. So gains of 22 and 15 yards on the last two plays for OU. They do such a good job of using the motion to create space, and then all of a sudden you get some clear out, and now you've got room to run on that left side. And Stevenson's able to gain positive yardage. That's another one of those ways that Lincoln Riley uses his formation and the motion or movement of the system in order to create space and gain yards. First down to the 17. Hurts looking backside. Nothing there. Hurts takes off. Jalen Hurts out of bounds. Close to the Texas 5. Gains of 22, 14, and 12 yards on the last three plays. That'll make it first down and goal around the five, maybe the four and a half. Looked like that one was designed to go to the right. Everyone was flowing over to the right. The offense is right, even the wide receivers and the defensive backs. So when he broke it off and extended the play back to the left side, there was nobody there. And the last two times, Gus in the red zone, Hertz has turned it over. First down and goal at the four. Hurts sprinting out to his right. Changing Hurts. And he'll throw this one into the stand. Pressure by Joseph Asai. Asai has been an animal. He's been all over his effort and the ability to get back into the pocket and create some havoc on Hurts has been very good so far today. But Hurts there does the smart thing. Remember, on the last possession down here, he forced the ball in there and tried to throw across his body. It was picked off there. He just burns it all the way out of the back of the end zone. Second down and goal at the four. Hurts delivers. Incomplete. Intended for Rambo. He said he had it. Trying for that quick out. In front of the DB, Jamison. This is a great look right here. No, nope, clearly hits the ground without control. And now another third down. Third down and goal at the four. The Warrior on the previous play is an incomplete pass. And they'll that take a look. under further review. There's, there's no reason to stop this for a review. The first look that we had was clearly conclusive. Well, there is one reason to take a, another look at it. We get another opportunity to take a look at Mike Defee. <laughs> Obviously, he's been working on the biceps, triceps, shoulders. And with that in mind, we've got uh, our main man with us in the booth today, folks. Mikey Rule Books. <laughs> Mike Pereira. Mike, what do you think of this? Incomplete pass, Gus. Mikey Rule Books. I like that. The rule book would say here that he really didn't control the ball when the ball hit the ground. Then it popped out of his hand. So, again, I think a great call on the field that it was incomplete. Watch that left hand come off the ball there, and he has to re grip it with the right. So, to me, right call on the field, and it should stay incomplete. That's right. Mike Pereira knows both books, the college book and the NFL book. That's why he's just Mikey Rule book. There you go. Ruling on the field is confirmed. Incomplete pass. Makes it third down and goal at the four. You know, the reason I don't like that stoppage is you can say, well, they're trying to get it right. Yeah, but you give Oklahoma an artificial timeout there on a clearly conclusive replay in real time. And now Lincoln Riley has had a chance to huddle his team and think about this third down call. The last time they were on the left hash, it was their first series. They ran a sprint out to the right side and got a touchdown. They've been rolling that pocket to the right. I wonder if they're going to do that again for Jalen Hurts. Try to get him on the outside with a run pass option. From the four-yard line, third down and goal. 
OU running it, but Texas swarming defensively. Keandre Coburn with the tackle, and that brings up fourth down and goal. Wow. I mean, Texas has done an unbelievable job now on three possessions in the red zone. They have now forced two turnovers and here a field goal opportunity. So Gabe Burkich comes in to attempt the field goal. He's taken over the place kicking from Colum Sutherland, who's working through some off the field issues. Sutherland was the kicker in the first three games this year. And a timeout for Coach T and the Longhorns trying to get off the field with three points given to Oklahoma or less. I mean, it would be a huge win. I mean, Oklahoma has already forfeited, let's say, at a, at a minimum six points in their previous two red zone turnovers. you got to think that's at least field goal range in both of those. Now, Texas comes up with a big third down stop, and it looks like OU is going to stay with their kicking team, and they will for the field goal attempt. What a huge win for Texas here. Now, after a timeout like that, though, you got to be aware of a fake. You cannot just rush out of your lane and allow a tight end to get open in the end zone. Got to be aware of the fake here for Oklahoma. Chip shot for Burkich, 19 yards. And it's good. 10-0, OU. And Duvernay is the deep man as Burkitt prepares to send it away. And this one kicked deep into the end zone. Duvernay brings it out. Duvernay with courage. And he'll get across the 20 up to the 21. We've got a great slate of NFL action coming your way. Tomorrow on Fox, highlighted by Carson Wentz and the Eagles taking on the Vikings. Or another regional action, Russell Wilson and the Seahawks take on Baker Mayfield. Remember him at Oklahoma? And the Browns. Check out the listings for the game in your area or watch it on the Fox Sports app. One thing I like about Baker, he has really brought a lot of interest and fun to the NFL. Some critics love him. Some critics hate him. Yeah. Browns are up and down right now. Handshake gate with Richard <laughs> Nick Bosa with the flag last week. Here's Ellen. And up. Caught Duvernay. Yeah, great play there by Duvernay. That ball a little high, but he was able to go up the ladder and get a foot back down after making the catch. And this is a huge series here, not just because it's a two-minute situation, but also Texas is going to get the second-half kick. So this is a bit of a two-for-one, if you will, if you're you know, part of that nomenclature with the NBA. You can go down here and score and get the ball right back at a halftime. No timeouts for the Longhorns. First down of 39, Ellinger. Breaks contain, cuts it back, and Sam Ellinger gets to the 45. John Michael Terry with the tackle for Oklahoma. But moving forward, positive yardage that allows you to sit back there, continue to try to get the ball down the field to these big wide receivers. The defensive backs for Oklahoma have done a marvelous job, but Ellinger is going to have to take a shot down the field at some point, in particular to Colin Johnson. Second down at five. They run it left, Duvernay. And Duvernay picks up a first down as he gets inside Oklahoma territory. Jaden Davis stops him. Texas has no timeouts. They've got to be aware of where the football is. If they complete the ball in front of the first down marker, they've got to hustle up to spike it. First down to the 49. Low snap handle. Ellinger breaks the tackle and is dropped. Behind the line of scrimmage, Ronnie Perkins. And they've got to hurry. They're taking way too much time here. The wide receivers just jogging back. This is the problem with no timeouts. Got to get the ball across the line to gain for a first down. Second down and 11 at midfield. Ellinger setting up, looking. Nobody open. Ellinger runs it, flags down. Radley, Radley, Brandon Radley Hiles, rather, chasing Ellinger out of play. Yeah, and before Radley Hiles was making that play, he was in coverage. 
I think they're going to get him on a hold. Holding. Defense number 44. That 10 yard penalty be added to the end of the line. Guardy results in a first down. I mean, that was a huge play. Watch Bradley Heights. He's in the middle of your screen right here, working against Duvernay, and he grabs a hold of him, and then he just starts pulling on him right there. An easy flag for the official. Ellinger had nowhere to go to the ball, partly because of that hold. It was a tough camera angle there because you didn't see him actually pull. He absolutely pulled on his jersey and held him off the line of scrimmage. Remember, Texas's kicker, Cameron Dicker, nailed a 57-yarder against Rice earlier this season. It would be 55 yards if they didn't gain another yard from this point, Gus. First down and 10 at the Oklahoma 38 for UT. Ellinger, the thrower, near side and caught. Nice catch by Colin Johnson. He laid out, brings it in two-yard gain. One of the most sensational two-yard catches you'll ever see. Watch him extend on this. You're exactly right. Gus, I mean, kind of all the way out there toward the sideline. Was he in? in? Well, I thought that foot was still down, but now it... The question is about maintaining control through going to the ground. Remember the process of the catch. It's control, body part, then maintaining control throughout the process of going to the ground. It didn't look like he did, but they're going to let him play, it looks like. Second and seven. Here's Sam Ellinger. Running. Ellinger gets close to the 30 and goes out of bounds. It'll give Cameron Dicker some more room to work with in case they don't pick up the first down or the touchdown. Don't forget, the Big Noon Halftime Show sponsored by State Farms. Standing by. Rob Stone, Brady Quinn, Reggie Bush, Matt Leinert, and Coach Meyer right here at the State Fair. What an unbelievable play by Ellinger just to allow for this field. Remember, if he would have gone down inbounds, this clock would have run out. Cameron Dicker into a tip one from 49 yards out. And a timeout called by Oklahoma. Into a tip one now from 49 yards away. And another timeout. That one would have been good. Oklahoma. Lincoln Riley will make timeout of the half. Cameron Dicker, think about it. Sophomore from Austin, Lake Travis. He's certainly been good. And if you can play football in Austin, you go to Lake Travis. <laughs> that's that's the truth. A couple of players have come out of that place. Gosh, they are such a good program. There's no doubt about that. Four of six on the season, Gus, and his two misses have been from that 40 to 49 range, which this is it. And we saw this last week. Quinn Nordeen from Michigan made one while a timeout was being called from deep, and then he came out here and in live game action missed it to the right. Dicker's miss is to the left. He's a hook player. He draws the ball from the right to the left. From 49 yards away. And Lincoln Riley will use all of his timeouts. <laughs> the battle. Texas trying to put some points on the board before they head into the locker room. Cameron Dicker from 49 yards away. Got it away. Dicker. The kicker is back. Oh, you. Texas. Dicker with that strong leg knocks this one down from 49 yards out. Texas, Coach Teal take it. 10 3 our score at halftime. Coming up after this short break, we'll get you to Rob Stone and the guys for the big noon halftime show right here at the State Fair. Let's get it. with how they're playing. As well he should be. First and 10 at the 13 for Sam Ellinger. And the Longhorns. Here's Ellinger to throw it on first down. Delivers, has a receiver. And incomplete. That one thrown a little late. As Trey Brown 
tracked the ball down while it was in the air. Eagles, the intended receiver. And Eagles had a step, but you're right. It was late and underthrown, and that's what allowed Brown to get back into position and ultimately get this ball knocked away. And he does a great job of not contacting Eagles forcibly. Does not draw a penalty. That's a good no call and great coverage down the field for OU. Ellinger, 9 of 12, 71 yards. He'll throw it into the flats. Caught Ingram. And I tell you what, this Alex Grinch defense, Coach Grinch, the defensive coordinator in his first year coming over from Ohio State, where he coached last year for our coach Urban Meyer, he has really got these guys queued up on the defensive side like we've never seen before. Well, well, I mean, early 2000s, they were great. But in this era, you're right. And this has been the defense and the difference, Gus, on third down. Last year, 118th in the country. They came into today's ball game fifth in the country in third down defense. Let's see if they can get off the field again. Third and seven at the 16, Ellinger. Scrambling, Ellinger steps up. Ellinger looking for the first down, and he has it. So we've got two quarterbacks that can run, folks. We've got the two best quarterbacks in the Big 12 who happen to be two of the best quarterbacks in America. And this is what is just killer for a defense. Watch Neville Gallimore, number 90, right up the field, does a great job providing some pressure, but it's the extension of the play by Ellinger that creates the first down. Ellinger now near side, Duvernay, he stood up and taken down. Another great open field tackle for this Sooner team, Justin Broyles this time. Broyles, I'll tell you what, that's not the guy you want to see in open field is Duvernay because Duvernay is so dangerous with the ball in his hands, but Broyles comes up and makes a great tackle. Second down and 11 at the 26. Ellinger. Guns it underneath incomplete. Eagles the intended receiver again. That one right in his hands in front of Trey Brown. And here's another third down opportunity. It was Ellinger's legs that was able to create the conversion on the first third down of this drive. We'll draw your attention to number 90, Neville Gallimore. He has provided such a great pass rush during the course of this game. He is the Nose tackle right over the center. He's been doing a great job. He's a fifth-year senior. Watch this bull rush. 6'3", 302 pounds. Third and 11. Sam Ellinger under pressure. Sacked again. Kenneth Murray. Fourth sack of the game for Oklahoma. And in order to beat Alabama, in order to beat Clemson, this OU defense had to get better. And they are looking better right now under Alex Grinch. Gallimore, the nose tackle, he brought the center across, and Murray comes around and screams in from the inside. This is the exact pressure that they struggled with against LSU, and again here today. So the Longhorn sent it away, takes a bounce. C.D. Lamb grabs it, stays on his feet, and is taken down at the 35, a 48-yard punt, a loss of one. 10-3, though. OU. Here comes Jalen Hurts and the Sooners on offense right after the seven yards. He's also fumbled once. Two turnovers. First down and 10 to the 35. The handoff. This time it's Stevenson. And Ramondre Stevenson, the junior from Vegas, picks up three. Well, after the defense comes out there with a quick stand on this first possession. Now it's incumbent on this OU offense to continue to get into that rhythm. They moved the ball. It was just those turnovers down inside the 20-yard line and then stalling out for a field goal that hurt them. Second and seven at the 38. Play fake. Hurt sets up deep in the pocket. Now bounces it outside. Throws on the move down the field. And incomplete. Hurts under pressure. Trace Sermon down the field, out of the backfield. You know, one of the things that I talked with Coach Riley about with at length was that he, he's been trying to get Jalen Hurts to stay in the pocket and go through the progression. And when there's pressure, that's understandable. But one of the things he resorts to is running too early. 
and Lincoln's trying to get him to stay in there, read through the progression, get to the second, third, and fourth man in the progression in order to find the completion. Third down at seven to the 38, hit as he throws it, complete. That time, Texas bringing pressure. Assad. Hitting Hurts as he throws, and Oklahoma will punt it away. And here comes this pressure right up the middle. Oklahoma's trying to run a screen on this left side. See the left side start to clear out. Hurts has got the blitz right in his face, and he's trying to get back to that little bubble screen, that inside tunnel screen from the left. But Osai is right there. He and Malcolm Roach with the contact. Todd Orlando also calling a great game for Texas, their defensive coordinator. Jameson is the deep. Here's Jamison. Let's it take a bounce. And three hour score. Here's Ellinger. He'll run it straight ahead. Oh! Ronnie Perkins met him in the hole. Well, Ellinger is going to have to start playing a little bit better. And he's our academic ambitions. Academic ambition sponsored by SoFi. Get your money right. Academic All Big 12 first team, four time member of the Big 12 Commissioner's Honor Roll. But I got to tell you, this is a spot in the game where he's got to start playing better, in particular down the field. He has not given his wide receivers a chance to win. He needs to start doing that by throwing the ball on time. Second down and eight at the nine yard line. Ellinger goes to the sideline, and it's caught at the 29 yard line. On second and eight, they'll pick up. 20 yards, Colin Johnson hauls it in. That's exactly what I'm talking about. The ball comes out on time. It's a back shoulder fade. They're great at throwing that route, and it's a completion. They'll hand it off. Johnson. Sean Johnson. Picks up a couple. I'll tell you, this OU defense. They're playing so aggressive. That was Pat Fields, number 10, the safety, who came up and made that tackle within two yards of the line of scrimmage. At some point, they're going to have to continue to take those shots down the field because of how aggressive these safeties are playing in the run game. Second down and eight at the 30. Here's Duvernay over the right side. No room because OU's Jaden Davis plugged up the hole, dropped him. No gain on the play. Watch Jaden Davis. He's going to take on the back. This is Roshan Johnson. Boom. He takes his outside shoulder, and now there's nowhere for Duvernay to go. And then he's got his help from the inside of the field. What a great play by the young corner, true freshman Davis. Third down and eight for Texas at the 30. As Sam Ellinger lines up in the shotgun. Ellinger. Steps up, looking, Ellinger dumps it off, caught, Johnson, can he get the first down? Yes, he does. What a hard run after the catch by Rashawn Johnson, Trey Brown with the tackle, but it's a first down UT. I mean, just got rid of it. Watch as this is Murray who comes up, and he's just behind the line of scrimmage, and he's able to flip that out to Johnson for the conversion. On first and ten, they'll run it with Johnson. Here comes a freshman, Rashad Johnson, down the sideline. Rashad Johnson down at the Oklahoma five. Turner Yell with the saving tackle, along with Radley Hines. A gain of 58. You're going to get a missed tackle from this side of the OU defense. Off on their left right there. There's the missed tackle. Now they're out of position. One more missed tackle, and now they're playing quick. First down and goal at the four. Johnson! Touchdown, Texas! Whoa! Out of nowhere! Rashawn Johnson, a converted quarterback, true freshman, two of the biggest plays of the game. And tempo on both of these snaps, helping Texas. OU not quite lined up. And how about the power of the true freshman? Does he get in? It sure looks like it. Doesn't come down until that ball was reached back over his left shoulder for a touchdown. And with running backs, Keontae Ingram, Daniel Young, Kirk Johnson, and Jordan Whittington all injured at various points this season, Tom Herman turned to his third-string quarterback. Rashad Johnson, 
who had never played the position before, but has crazy athleticism. I mean, he does not look like a converted player. Look at the power he runs with. He understands how to absorb the hit with his shoulder, keep his body off the field while extending for the goal line. Watch as he keeps his body off the field and then extends the ball back right there. It looks like it hits the plane of the goal line before that left hip, left side, and left tricep actually come down. Certainly looks like a touchdown to me. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play today. Rashawn Johnson. He's got a strong last name, partner. <laughs> That's why you keep going with it. I love it. As they're still in the review, I'll just put it this way. There's nothing in that review that would suggest that you would overturn it. That's why it's, to me, a pretty clear whether it's confirmation or stands, it's pretty clear this is going to be a touchdown. After further review, the ruling on the field stands touchdown. So here we go. Texas with a chance to level this game at 10. In two plays, suddenly, courtesy of a freshman, game on. 8.48 to play in the third quarter. Cameron Dicker, who was the hero as a true freshman last year in this contest for Texas, with the extra point. And good. 10-10, high fives, attaboys on the Texas sideline. Longhorns, 11. Sooners will get the ball back now. And this will be down in the end zone. Let's go downstairs to Jenny. Guys, Rashawn Johnson has brought new life to this Texas sideline. I cannot even tell you how many guys came over to congratulate him, including Coach Herman. And the way his player, his teammates and coaches talk about him, just so much respect. You know, Ingram said that he is taking every chance he can get to watch film, to get involved, to ask questions. Now, he was asked if he'd want to go back to being a quarterback. His answer was this. If I'm playing running back now, I'm a running back. Simple as that. Thank you very much, Jenny. He'll go back to quarterback after this season is over. But right now, he's doing a terrific job running the football for Texas. Let's see how Oklahoma responds. First down at their own 25. Hurts off his back foot. C.D. Lamb turns it up. And C.D. Lamb close to the first down and a flag. Whoa. Malcolm Roach. And let's hope that's not a targeting. It's going to be. And oof, Gus, I've got to look up here. There's no doubt that it's going to be. And he's already taken off his helmet. He knows it. This is going to be certainly looked at further. Not only was it a touch late, as Lamb kind of goes down, but bam, Ooh. leads with the crown of his head. Remember. After the play, personal foul. And the say rough is. Defense with targeting. Deep number 32. The 15 yard penalty from the dead ball spot. It plays under further review. There's the two forms of targeting. Obviously, the dis defenseless player, where then there's any forcible contact to the head or neck area of that defenseless player, or launching to attack with forcible contact to the head or neck area of the defenseless opponent, or forcible contact with the crown of the helmet. This is certainly that last one that I stated. There's no doubt he dips, the head goes down, and he creates what I would deem certainly forcible contact. He's not trying to let up at all. That's absolutely a targeting and a play that they're trying to get rid of. And Malcolm Roach, the senior and the leader of this defense, in my estimation, Gus is going to be ejected. It looks like he tried to get his head to the side and use his shoulder as he hit Lamb in the shoulder, partner. Well, don't ask me. Ask Mikey rule books. All right. After Mike, review, what do you think? Only on the field is confirmed. Number 32 is disqualified. Uh, 
Yeah, and, and Gus, there's no question here because actually when he does go to the ground, he's considered defenseless at that point. So you have to keep that helmet out of there. It was the crown. It was forcible in an attacking mode. You had that indicator there. So really the right decision in replay to stay with the call and the right call on the field by Al Green, the headlines. Group. This is a giant moment for the Texas defense. Their offense finally got momentum. They had been playing so well in the last five possessions. They had held OU, one of the best offenses in the country, to only three points. And now they've just watched their leader, their senior, jog off to the locker room. Somebody for Todd Orlando's defense has got to step up. One of these young players has got to step up and become the alpha, the leader of this Texas defense. And it has to happen now. A couple of guys I'm looking at. Brandon Jones, number 19. He's a senior. He can do that at safety. And Joseph Osai. Joseph Osai has played great today, number 46. We'll see if he can step it up. First down at the 49 for Oklahoma. Stevenson. And Stevenson bottled up and dropped close to the line of scrimmage. Coburn again, number 99, the redshirt freshman from Houston. And Coburn is a guy that they absolutely rave about. 340 pounds, and if you're going to run this odd-style defense, odd meaning there's only three down linemen, odd defense. Coburn's got to be a great player at the nose tackle position. He's number 99 lined up right over the center and he's got to be the one that stuffs the run. Second down and 10 at the 49. They run it again. Flea flicker. Hurts. Wide open. CD in space. CD Lamb still running. It's a corner. CD for the TD. 51 yards. We told you he was electric with the ball in his hands, and he doesn't disappoint. The flea flicker, the give inside to Brooks. He flips it back wide open over there. C.D. Lamb, look as he goes right inside, and then right here, the missed tackle, the strength he shows, and he gets all the way to the corner for the TD. This guy has a nose for the goal line like I haven't seen in a long time. Every time he touches the ball, he is a threat to go the distance. C.D. Lamb, eight catches, 133 yards, two touchdowns for the preseason All-American from Richmond, Texas, Foster High School. And OU with a chance to take a 17-10 lead here at Red River. Burkich. 17 One total touchdown in the first half of the third quarter two in the last two series we finally got to see OU versus Texas <laughs> there you go Duvernay will he get a chance yes bobbles it picks it up at the five and he'll be downed at the five he had his, his hand up as he was moving over. He was fair catching that ball. So remember, it doesn't have to be a, a clean catch at that point. They're awarding him the fair catch with safety. Watch as he's moving to his right. As soon as that, just one time that hand goes above the shoulder, they're going to award that the fair catch, and they blew it dead right away. Don't forget, check out all of Joel's Breaking the Huddle content at foxsports.com slash breaking the huddle and on Fox Sports social platforms sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Mike, they're putting the ball at the five. Help us out here. No, that's because he has to complete the fair catch. If he drops the ball, it's dead when he recovers, but he does not get the ball to 25. First down and 10 at the five. Ellinger pulls it out. Guns it underneath and incomplete. Colin Johnson. Man, if he would have caught that football, could have been major trouble for OU. He definitely had room. He had created some space against Trey Brown. At least two steps there. I think that was in his head. He was trying to think about what he was doing after the catch, running after the catch before he completed the catch. Second and ten at the five. And 
and some movement. Full start. Offense. Number 80. Half the distance to the goal. Second down. There's Brewer, the tight end, on the right side of that line. There's the flinch. He saw that little flinch as well from Samuel Cosme, and that kind of got him to move as well. It's the fifth drive starting inside their own 15 out of eight total drives today. OU winning the battle of field position. Texas flinches again. You know, but this is the right thing to do if you're Sam Ellinger. Because a false start doesn't hurt you. What's half the distance when you're on the two? Who cares about that yard? False start. Offense. Everybody but the center. <laughs> half the distance to the goal. Second down. But what I'm saying is he's trying to use that, that double clap to try to draw OU offside. You're trying to get a free five yards knowing that if you jump offside on your own side, your false start, then it is just one yard back and half the distance right in front of all these OU fans. Second and 13, Ellinger passing out of the end zone. Goes up top. Incomplete. Eagles dropped it again in front of Parnell Motley. So that's two drops on this series. Motley in coverage. And watch, see, he tried to one-hand that ball. I mean, that is perfectly thrown on the outside shoulder. You cannot throw a ball better than that, but he tries to one-hand it because Motley's got that right hand tied down to the hip. Third and 13. Ellinger running it out of the end zone. Wants just a little room as he goes down after two-yard pickup. Ronnie Perkins brings him down, and now Texas will have to punt deep in their own territory. What a series from the OUD. Last series, they gave up the long run to Roshan Johnson, then the touchdown, and they came right back, and they got very aggressive, helped out by their own fans on this end of the Cotton Bowl. And now, exactly what you don't want to do, punt from your own end zone like this, heels all the way at the back end line. Buczewski gives himself some room, sends it away. C.D. Lamb is deep. Catches it on the run, breaks a tackle, and Lamb finally taken down, but OU will start inside Texas territory. Byron Vaughns with the tackle on special teams. Let's go to Sam Farber for a game break. Number three, Georgia trailing against two and three, South Carolina. Jake Fromm trying to lead a game time drive, but he can't handle the snap. T.J. Brunson jumps on it. Gamecocks still leading 17 to 10 in the fourth quarter, trying to be the first road team to win in Athens since 2016. Justin Joel. Wow, how about that? Georgia in some trouble at home. And here in Red River, Texas in a bit of trouble as OU, Gus, has great field position. From the Texas 38, first down. Hurts, Rambo. Rambo following his blocks. And finally knocked out a play. After a seven-yard gain, Brandon Jones defensively for Texas. What you've seen now is the quick passing game on the outside. Some play action. You saw the trick play in the last series, the flea flicker for the touchdown. But they're trying to give Jalen Hurts an opportunity to get the ball out of his hand quickly to try to establish rhythm for Hurts, who in the second half started to run a little bit too soon. Lincoln Riley said he wanted to calm him down. How do you calm down a quarterback? Get him easy completions on the outside quickly. Second and three. Hurts. Here's another easy one. Rambo again. First down. Great stiff arm for the sophomore from Cedar Hill, Texas. A day away. Deshaun Jamison combining on the tackle. Now what you're going to start to see is you see this great move. A little stiff arm boom right there. Doesn't grab the face mask. Just throws it right on his hand. Throws him down to the ground, but now I, what you're going to see now is him come back to the run game at some point. Now you're starting to spread that defense out with these quick completions. Now you're going to come back with some of that guard tackle pull, that counter play. C.D. Lamb around the left side. Breaks the first tackle. Lamb still on the move, finally. Slung down a day away. After a four-yard pickup. 
Oh, this is so important for both of these teams. We've seen Texas already today come up huge. When OU has driven the ball down into scoring territory, they've gotten a couple of turnovers. They forced a field goal. That's why we're sitting here in a one possession game. And we'll see if Texas can do it again. This defense without their leader up front, Malcolm Roach, if you're just joining us, ejected for targeting on the last series. And so now a depleted Texas defense trying to bow their neck. Second and six at the 17. Hurts backpedaling and incomplete. Texas with pressure on Jalen Hurts. We're trying to slip Willis out there, Braden Willis. It was a great job defensively by Joseph Osai. He was in man coverage. He was not fooled by that play action pass. And now an opportunity to force a kick for Texas's defense. This is what they wanted. They have brought pressure on third downs consistently. We'll see if Todd Orlando, the defensive coordinator, goes back to that blitz package. Watch C.D. Lamb. Number two, top of your screen. And they don't get it off in time. Actually a timeout call by Oklahoma. Lincoln Riley with the play clock winding down gets the timeout. Under five to go or 30 Pacific on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Here come the Longhorns, Duvernay. And a good special teams coverage by Oklahoma as Duvernay gets to the 16. Let's check in with Jenny. Gus Semelinger has been busy on the sideline trying to do anything in his power to get his offense going. He spent time with his old line, speaking with Zach Shackelford, specifically his center. He also had a message for his receivers. We got to start making plays. Forget about what, he, what has already happened and get it done. Coach Herman has always described him as the ultimate competitor. I was seeing that on the sideline, but he needs to make a difference in this next one, guys. All right, Jenny, thank you very much. First and 10 of the 16, Texas receivers have to hold on to the football. That's right. There's only so much you can do as a quarterback. He's thrown some perfect passes down the field. They've got to execute on the outside. On first down, Ellinger looking. Ellinger sacked again. The sixth sack of the day, Jalen Redman. The redshirt freshman from Midwest City, Oklahoma. They're doing such a good job in coverage, but Redmond's on the outside, and he's just going to keep going and keep going. He's being double teamed, and he still gets home for the sack. Alex Grinch, the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma, told us he wants one thing out of this defense, max effort, and they have certainly delivered that here today. No excuses. Second and 15 at the 11. Sam Ellinger drops it off, caught Ingram, and he is wrapped up immediately. Brian Asamoa, another loss, this time three yards. And these depth players, we're seeing a lot of Sooners play in order to maintain that maximum effort. Brian Asamoa is not a starter. He comes in as a depth player, and you can see him flying around, makes an open field tackle, and another third and long. Brady Quinn talked about it at halftime. These situations are killing Texas. Third and long, you cannot do anything when you're constantly in these third and obvious situations as a quarterback. This Oklahoma defense looking like the Ohio State Buckeye defense. Ellinger in trouble. Incomplete. Pressure, pressure, pressure. The Oklahoma defense applying major pressure this time. Nick Benito. Benito, Redmond's also in there. Watch this. They're going to loop around again. Again, Texas against LSU. Gus, they were beaten by these loopers and the stunt from the outside coming right up the middle several times. And OU has taken that. And they put it into their game plan here today. Texas again punting deep out of their own end zone. C.D. Lamb lets it go out of bounds at midfield. And Oklahoma will take over inside Texas territory. You know, one of the things that I've 
enjoyed so much as Coach Meyer has joined us here at Fox Sports is just talking to him about overall philosophy as a coach and he talked about the gospel. And I said, explain it to me. Well, what's the gospel as a coach? And he said, field position, field position, field position. And in big games, establishing your field position is where it's at. And Jalen Hurts has been the beneficiary of that. Even though he hasn't played great outside of that first quarter, they have constantly started their series in great position. Their average starting field position today, the 39-yard line. And they find Brooks, and Brooks is crushed as he tries to cut the ball inside. Anthony Cook down. He was the first man to it. I mean, this was a major collision. Cook with a great read from the corner spot, and he beats everybody and just bam, right on that right leg. And he takes him on with his right shoulder. Oh, my goodness. And to see the two top teams in the Big 12, known as an offensive conference, a scoring conference, to play this kind of defense is very refreshing. Remember, Oklahoma and Texas faced each other twice last year. Texas winning in this game, Red River, and then Oklahoma returning the favor in a terrific ball game in the Big 12 championship. And this is one of the things that Tom Herman has talked about ever since he got here as the head coach was toughness, being physical, trying to establish a defensive culture. But look at the scores from last year. Red River, Texas winning 48-45. Big 12 championship, Oklahoma winning 39-27. I think part of you got two things going on. One, I don't think the execution offensively today has been all that great. We've seen a lot of drops and penalties. But then also, I think both teams on defense have played exceptionally well. One, they've played hard. And Gus, I think the main part, they've both tackled well in space. And I think that's always been the big bugaboo, in particular here in this conference in the Big 12, is you don't tend to see great tackling in space. But we've seen it today out of these two teams. Second down and 12 at midfield. Hurts with time goes up top incomplete no flag on the play Lee Morris the intended receiver and coach Meyer always talks about defense and when your corners can tackle it sets a tone for the entire defense yeah we've seen a lot of that and here it's safety Brandon Jones with great coverage maybe a little overthrown for Lee Morris remember Lee Morris having to play at tight end because Grant Calcaterra the all big 12 tight end for OU out of this game with an injury third down and 12 can Texas get off the field play fake hurts in trouble hurts can he break first down that was incredible this ball was behind his back and he somehow hangs on watch the hand strength it's behind his back he's trying to switch hands and he does with Osai hanging all over him and then he finds the completion down the field to CD Lamb that is remarkable that close to a potential turnover Oklahoma going for it. fourth down and one empty backfield for Hurts he may run this one Hurts underneath, incomplete, Texas holds. That ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage, and it was the blitzing linebacker, Juwan Mitchell, number six. Watch Juwan Mitchell. He gets his right hand up. They're trying to throw the slant. And he bats it down on fourth down. What a hold from Texas. I keep telling you this defense is keeping their team in the game. This field position has been against them all day long, and they've continued to make plays. The only reason Texas has a chance here, still down 10, is the fact that their defense has played exceptional football when their backs have been against the wall. 1.30 to go in the third, Lincoln Riley. A motivating conversation with his quarterback, who hasn't played his best today. Here's the run. Johnson, Rashad Johnson, still moving. The true freshman, dual threat quarterback, called 
involved in the action at running back because of injuries with a gain of 24 yards. And exactly like on their scoring drive, Gus, they'll go tempo here, probably a run again. Johnson again straight ahead. And he'll pound forward for a couple. Deshaun White with the tackle. And they'll go fast again. What you got to be aware of is a little play action here. They go fast, fast, run, 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 and then boom, a play action pass. Second and seven. Here's the pass. Ellinger underneath Colin Johnson. He won't go drop that one, partner. You know Ellinger said something to him on the sideline because look at this. Full extension, and he brings it in. Ooh, with a little bit of bobble, too. Wow. First down of the 22. Rashawn Johnson again, straight ahead. I just love this kind of game. Back and forth, defensive matchup. Both teams giving their all. Playing tough, hard nose as they stay, as they say in this part of the world, smash mouth football. Second and nine of the 21. pulls it out incomplete and a flag Johnson had Trey Brown wrapped all over him. easy call for the official here draped all over him holding defense number six it's a 10 yard penalty from the previous spot automatic first down I was talking with Alex Grinch, the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma, before the game down on the field. Last thing he said to me is he said, if we don't get a couple of pass interference or holding calls, we're not doing our job. He wanted to force them to throw the flag, be physical with these wide receivers, and you see a byproduct of that on the last play. First and 10 at the 11-yard line. Rashawn Johnson in the backfield with Ellinger. Ball start. Offense, number nine. It's a five-yard penalty, first down. Colin Johnson, and I keep thinking in the back of my mind, partner, you got Rashawn Johnson who's really running the football extremely well yeah. for Texas, but he's a quarterback. Yeah. At some point. He's got to throw it. I, I hear you. At some point, you, you think that they're going to hand it to him, and it might be a pass for number two. First down at 15 at the 16-yard line. Ellinger looking. Ellinger, flag on the play, incomplete. Johnson again, the target. Trey Brown again, wrapped around him. And this is going to go against OU. A lot of contact again. Please keep the players on the field. We've got a foul that will extend the quarter. Will not be the end of the quarter. Have the play the down extend here. the quarter. Pass interference. Defense number six. And penalty being forced all the way to the two-yard line. First and goal. We'll have one untimed down. They'll have an untimed untimed down here from the two. Listen, you can certainly make that call. There's no doubt. There's enough contact. My only problem is that it hasn't been consistent. They've allowed that contact to go on all day long. Plus, it was initiated on both sides. Colin Johnson was pushing just as much as Trey Brown. I thought that that was at best a no call, but it is called, and now Texas has the untimed down from the two. First down. Ingram in the backfield with Ellinger. Ellinger wants to run it. Ellinger leading forward on 230 touchdown. Longhorns. Somewhere in the bowels of this stadium, Urban Meyer is smiling because his former assistant, Coach T, used a JT Barrett, Braxton Miller type play here. One of the five most important traits of being a great quarterback. Number two on that list is toughness, as we talked about in the pregame and toughness is calculated when in short yardage do you refuse to lose do you get the conversion do you get it across the goal line and Ellinger does that 
In fact, he's run it over 50 times since the beginning of last year in short yardage situations. He's converted or scored a touchdown over 75% of those runs. Extra point. It's good. Into the third quarter. Box. Start of the fourth quarter as we take a look at the scoring through the first three. Well, this Texas team has come out and really shown some life here in the third quarter with a couple of touchdowns, really led by their running back, Rashawn Johnson. Let's take a look at the game recap. Second half scoring. Well, Johnson had that long run, paid it off with this touchdown. Then OU with some trickery, and C.D. Lamb just so good with the ball in his hands. He's able to break a tackle, get into the end zone. Then the Texas defense showed up on a short field. They forced OU into a fourth down situation which they did not convert and then it's capped off by Sam Ellinger in the end zone and we got a three point game. This is why those possessions were so huge for Texas all game long when they were either forcing a field goal or creating turnovers on what I would deem as scoring type drives for Oklahoma. This defense has done yeoman's work. Hurts on the play fake sets up deep in the pocket goes over the middle and it's a wide open receiver. Braden Willis a sophomore from Arlington James Martin High School with a big gain of 25 and Lincoln Riley dialing up a great play call there throwing the play action pass that run fake right in the face of the linebacker that's supposed to be responsible for Willis number 81 and it's a blown coverage and a wide open sooner down the field and they're again in business here at the 50 yard line. Hurts runs it this time. Jalen Hurts first down as he goes down. And they may not give him the first down depending on his slide. He needed to reach the 40. And remember, they mark you where you start the slide. So as soon as he dips back to start the slide right there, that's a great spot by the official. A yard short, he starts to go down. That's where the play is over. He becomes a dis defenseless player, so they don't give him any more yardage. And here we are with one to go. Second down and one. And it's Hurts looking for the first down, and he has it inside the Texas 40. Juwan Mitchell with the tackle for UT. Remember on their on their series where they've really moved the ball well, they've done it with quality run game, which now we're seeing out of the quarterback, and also quick passing Gus out on the outside, allowing for those easy completions, which then spreads the defense out and allows the offense to get into some rhythm and use tempo. First down. Here's the run for Oklahoma. Brooks will gain maybe eight yards on the play. A sigh tackles him from behind. How about this block from Ramadre Stevenson? He's going to come up and a two back set. Here's a tailback that goes and bam, right on the linebacker as if he's a fullback. That's a great block. Allows Brooks to get back outside for a nice run. Oklahoma with. 189 yards rushing second and two at the 31 Brooks first down Mitchell with the tackle get the sense with the play calling right now that Lincoln Riley is is trying to make life a little bit easy on Jalen Hurts. We've seen some ill advised throws. One resulted in an interception. Another one was dropped by Jamison. And you get the sense that he's trying to kind of milk this thing along a little bit. They are taking their time with the play clock. He's trying to create easy things for Jalen to see and execute on the field. First and 10 at the 27. Hurts throws off his back foot again. CD Lamb. Three touchdowns for one of the best receivers in college football. Yo, know, 
this dude is an absolute beast. Are you kidding me? There's three Longhorns there that all have somewhat of a chance, and he still finds the end zone. The work that he has done in the weight room in the offseason is palpable. This dude is powerful. And an absolute dude on the outside. Burkitts for the extra point. And it's good. Earlier in the season, the media asked C.D. Lamb about not getting targeted. He said, don't worry. My time will come. I have to be patient. Patience paying off right now. Lincoln Riley says, yeah. 27-17. At OU in the weight room, and I walk through the weight. I walk through the weight room one day, and he he walks by, and I kind of I kind of stop, and I was like, I'm sorry, what? He is jacked, and you can tell when people hit him, he doesn't move. He's like a, a ball of granite. This one kicked deep in the end zone uh, for a touchback, and you're just amazed at what human beings are able to do now. How about Eliud Kipchoge? who ran the fastest marathon ever in Vienna yesterday. One hour, 59 minutes, 40 seconds, point two. 159, 40 point two. Yeah, but he didn't. 26.2 miles yeah, but he didn't in have, under two hours. He didn't have three Longhorns hanging out. <laughs> So here's Texas from the 25. Got to answer. Gus, got to answer if you're the Longhorn offense. Ellinger. And he's sacked again. This time, Marquez Overton. And that is sack number seven. He's going to come all the way from his defensive tackle spot and another looper, another stunt for OU, moving this defensive front, and he gets home. Great coverage in the back end. Ellinger nowhere to go with the football. And again, uh, Texas is behind the chains. Every time that they have not stuck with that run game with Johnson to start a series, OU has gotten a tackle for loss, gotten a sack, and gotten them behind schedule. Second and 18 after the loss from the 17-yard line. Sam Ellinger. Setting up a screen. He's got his man, Johnson. Breaks it back and gets to the 30. Ronnie Perkins tracked him down. 11-yard pickup. Good play call there. Backed up. Trying to get back into a more manageable third down position. OU has been very good defensively today on third down. Texas is only 4 of 11 on third down. They've done it with pressure from their down linemen. Neville Gallimore, number 90, has been one of the main culprits getting pressure on Texas. Texas in desperate need of a first down right here. Down 27-17. Sam Ellinger with time underneath in traffic. Colin Johnson. Did he hold on? No. And Johnson is down. Pat Fields and Trey Brown raking at the football. Here's a lot of contact. They're letting them play. They have all day except for the last series. Is that targeting? Well, that, I mean, they'll certainly look at it. I will tell you from, from this angle, watch as Johnson's head goes down, and he's the one that actually changes the level, and, and his head is the one that initiates contact. They'll take a look at it, and we can certainly talk about it. But remember, Johnson's got to he's got to get control and then make a football move. Let's go to Mikey Rule Books here. Mike Pereira, what do you think? Well, let's address the targeting first. I don't think it is. I mean, it's the side of his helmet. He turns the head to the side, and then it becomes, is it a catch or not? And I'm still not sure did they award the catch because it looked like there was a catch in forward progress there. And, it's a catch. Uh, and so, therefore, it's a catch. But I don't think you can put that in the category of targeting. Yeah, I would agree. And... He definitely controls the ball. Okay, so just from a catch standpoint, that's control. The field was a catch, and forward progress was ruled that he was being driven by. First down. It is a first down catch, and progress was the announcement, but you're right, Pat Fields, number 10. Mike, 
He definitely turns to the side with that head and initiates with the shoulder. And Colin Johnson's level was changing as he was coming down. But a big first down for Texas from their own 40. Ellinger looking. Sideline. Incomplete. Malcolm Epps, the intended receiver. They were trying to sneak Cade Brewer down the field. Watch this. They're going to go play action. He's going to stop, and then he's going to try to sneak down the field. Watch as Brewer blocks, 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 and then he tries to get down the field. But there's number 10, Pat Fields. Perfect position, reads it well, and Ellinger's got to burn the ball on the sideline. Second and 10. Here's Ellinger to throw it over the middle. And a completion for first down. Nice throw. Great catch. Devin Duvernay found a soft spot and gains 13. And that is their bread and butter, that Duvernay over the middle. And here's the tempo now. They'll go fast. Ellinger quick strike near side. Epps. Wrapped up by Brown. When they've been able to get into this tempo, the run game has popped for them. Roshan Johnson in the game in the backfield right now with Ellinger. Second and five. They'll run it. Roshan Johnson. And a submarine forward. Flag on the play, though. Ronnie Perkins stops him. Flag was on the near side right at the snap of the football. You know, they were going so fast, you wonder, did someone line up offside, whether it was a defense or even offensively in the formation? Illegal formation. Offense, number 68 was not lined up on the line of scrimmage. It's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. That's Derek Kerstetter, the right tackle, and he's just back way too far. They really like you to have your helmet at least in line with the butt or hip of that center, and that's where they'll get it. But he was way back in kind of that V, that flying V formation. They flagged him for it. Second and ten at the 47. Ellinger guns it. And caught by Epps. First down, UT. So it seems like the Texas offense has discovered something against this Oklahoma defense. Yeah, these in-breaking routes, whether it's Duvernay over the middle trying to hook around that linebacker or the inside-breaking routes, the slant passes on the outside for their outside wide receivers. And Ellinger is doing a great job, Gus, getting the ball out on time because when they're trying to read things out down the field, that's when they're inviting the pressure from the OU front seven. First down at the 37. Ellinger winds up. Ellinger incomplete. And a flag. Duvernay goes down hard. Pat Fields in coverage. A lot of contact down the field. Here's That's Fields. Defense number 10. The 15 yard penalty automatic. There's the hand, and then a bit of a grab right there. Ellinger loves it. Didn't look like a ton of contact, but that's a foul. So a first down for Texas at the Oklahoma 22. Ellinger in the end zone. Incomplete. Parnell Motley, terrific coverage on John Burt. That's how you position yourself as a corner down the field. Excellent coverage there. Basically runs the route for him. See how he's even or even on top of the wide receiver? That's what you've got to do. You've got to maintain that leverage on top of the wide receiver. That way you can turn around, play that ball, and he does it beautifully. Second down and 10 at the 22. Sam Ellinger, sideline, caught, Duvernay, turns it up, and he'll go out of bounds, close to the first down. I think they're going to give it to him, some fancy footwork over there on the sideline. He stayed in and got himself all the way down. 
for a first down. At the 12. Lefe, Ellinger, and nothing. Great job this time by the Oklahoma front line. Neville Gallimore eventually with the tackle, but Laron Stokes pinned him inside. This defense for Alex Grinch has been pressuring Ellinger all day long. They've done it with those stunts and twists up front. The outside defensive end coming up through the middle of the field trying to get into the face of Ellinger. We'll see if they do it here. Loss of three, second and 13 at the 15. Brewer in motion. Ellinger runs it this time. And Ellinger crosses the line of scrimmage for a one-yard gain. Neville Gallimore. I tell you, man, this big fella, Richard Sr. from Canada, Ontario, has been balling out this season. Yeah, he's been absolutely terrific, in particular today on third and 12. I don't think unless they got all the way down there with about a yard to go, that they would go for it on fourth because you would take the three points, make it a, two, a one possession game. So really, you're going for a conversion or a touchdown here. You've got to look on the outside, try to get one of your big wide receivers matched up with one of the smaller corners. Third and 12 of the 14. Ellinger in the end zone. And incomplete. Eagles thought he had a step, but Trey Brown tracked it down while the ball was in the air, and that'll bring on Cameron Dicker. It looked like Eagles was looking for a jump ball. He wanted something higher, and this is a bit underthrown, and when he tries to jump and come back for it, that's when Brown's able to turn around, play that ball with his left hand, and OU now bowing their neck a bit and forcing a field goal opportunity. Cameron Dicker good today from 49 yards. This one will be from 32 yards away. And perfect. Cameron Dicker two for two. More importantly, makes it a one possession game, 20 for. Trey Brown, the deep man for Oklahoma. And he'll let this one bounce in the end zone for a touchback. We'll step away. Jalen Hurts in the Oklahoma offense on the field after this. Seconds remaining here at Red River. Oklahoma ranked sixth in the nation. Texas at 11. First down at the 25 for Jalen Hurts. Hands it off. Brooks. Whoa! Brooks sprinting. Still on his feet. And he goes down at the 32. A 43-yard run for Kennedy Brooks. Osai with the saving tackle. Here's where they're going to use the motion again. Watch them use the motion with C.D. Lamb. And then you're going to get out in front with the guard and the tackle pulling. You vacate one of those areas with the motion and the man-to-man. -man, and then Brooks is able to exploit it down that right side. Great block out there on the outside. That was Marquise Hayes, number 54, the left guard who was pulling out in front of Kennedy Brooks. Kennedy Brooks, eight carries, 96 yards. First down at the Texas 33 for Oklahoma. Trey Sermon, Stevenson in the backfield now. And they'll give it to Stevenson. He gets downfield. Stevenson still moving, and he's wrapped up inside the 10. A day away with the tackle, but a gain of 24 yards. Deceptive speed for the big fella. Ramondre Stevenson from Cerritos Junior College last year. He rushed for 2,100 yards. That was the second best rushing season in junior college history. We got a Texas Longhorn down. That's Chris Brown, number 15. He was battling a thigh injury over the last couple of weeks. And OU today with 10 plays of 20 or more yards. Back-to-back -back gains of 42 and 24 yards on the ground. And remember what I said 
to start this whole thing out. What's the best thing Lincoln Riley does? The run, run the game. The run game. Everyone always talks about him being out of the Mike Leach tree and the air raid tree. And yes, that's true, certainly. And he's explosive in the passing game and uses those principles in the passing game. But as I sit and talk with him, it's very apparent that one of the biggest strengths he has is the run game. His willingness to be a run first team, as evidenced today, Gus, 259 yards on the ground on 30 rushes. That's 8.6 per rush. They have done a great job winning the line of scrimmage up front. That's Bill Biedenboe right there with the gray hat in the middle of your screen. He's the co-offensive coordinator and offensive line coach. And he's a guy that goes way back in this offense. And he's one of the architects of this guard tackle counter pull play that you just saw on the last long run from Kennedy And, and it shouldn't be surprising. Remember, this is Oklahoma. Billy Sims, Steve Owens, Billy Vessels. Marcus Dupree, Adrian Peterson, a couple of guys that uh, Samaj P. Ryan. Yeah, P. Ryan Mixon was in there. Uh, DeMarco Murray. You, you know, they've, they've always run the ball well, and that was one of the things that I thought was going to be interesting to mesh when Lincoln Riley was hired by Bob Stoops from East Carolina to be the offensive coordinator. In their first Red River game together, Stoops and Lincoln Riley, they lost to Texas and did not run the ball well that day. And Lincoln has told me that that was a real turning point for him. And he said, as a mandate to himself, I will be a great running game coach. And he has certainly turned out to be that. And this OU team has really won the battle up front here today. 259 yards rushing for Oklahoma. 235 yards passing. First down and goal of the nine. And it's Brooks. One thing, even up here, calling the game, it's so confusing on who has the football. Well, they do a great job of reading it out, and they do it with this GT play, guard tackle pulling, but they do it with the read. So Hertz is making a read. The defensive end comes up the field, so he gives the ball. He's got the guard and tackle pulling around. They run that play, Gus, out of... 30, 35, 40 different formations and movements. That's why it's so intricate and so tough to stop from a defensive coordinator perspective. Trey Sermon, Jeremiah Hall in the backfield for Oklahoma. They get it off. Hurts runs it straight ahead, tried to hop through the hole, but nothing doing. Nicely done. Keandre Colburn, we've mentioned his name a number of times for Texas today. Well, now what you're going to get is, is Oklahoma is in full milk the clock mode. They've got to think that they've got three points in their pocket. Burkich has been very good for them, their kicker so far. So they're going to try to keep this game clock going and use the entire length of the play clock while trying to, at some point on this series, punch it in. But I got to assume that they would kick the field goal to go up by two possessions if they're unable to get into the end zone here. Looks like Riley's going to want a timeout. Yep, on the far side, he's running down for a timeout, and they'll get it. Part of the snap. Oklahoma takes their second timeout of the half. It'll be 30 seconds. Try to make this conversion on third and goal. Trey Sermon, Jeremiah Hall in the backfield. Hurts runs it straight ahead. Touchdown, all you. Jalen Hurts. What you got is man to man from both of those linebackers. And as soon as the middle linebacker runs into the middle of the line, that's Creed Humphrey, all Big 12 center. He gobbles him up right there. Boom. Number six is blocked. Juwan Mitchell and Hurst runs easily for a touchdown. That's a great use of a formation. Get two backs in the backfield, kind of a split back set out of the shotgun. He knows that they were running a lot of man coverage. And so he all he has is those running backs just flare out. And then it's one linebacker to beat. He beats him with the center and Hurts is in the end zone. Eighth rushing touchdown of the season for Jalen Hurts. Extra point, good. 34 to 20. 419 to go. Oklahoma. They get a touchdown from Jalen Hurts, his first rushing touchdown of the game. And Oklahoma, 419 away with a 34 to 20 lead. 
And Duvernay will take a knee. Busy day today over on FS1 at 4 Eastern, Texas Tech and number 22 Baylor collide, followed by a key Big Ten showdown as Nebraska takes on Minnesota. Then we've got some Pac-12 after dark action with Washington facing Arizona at 11. All games are also available on the Fox Sports app. Who's the best team in college football right now? I think Ohio State is. They're the most complete. They've the one. They're the one team that has shown the least amount of holes up to this point. They're explosive. They're great on defense. I got to tell you, Oklahoma has shown me something in particular with their defense here today, and here they are again. Ellinger avoids a sack. And he's finally taken down at the 30. Neville Gallimore. There was one question about this team coming into this season. They hire a new defensive coordinator. It's been all about, is the defense better? Is the defense better? Well, up to this point, they are absolutely better. This is such a different team now with a defense that can actually play some real football. Ellinger drops it off near side, incomplete. Nick Benito covering Rashawn Johnson. And there's Alex Grinch in his first year as a defensive coordinator at Oklahoma, coming from Ohio State, where he shared defensive coordinator's duties with Craig Shaheen. Craig Shiano, excuse me. Third down and five at the 30. And the catch. First down, Texas. Well, Eagles with the grab. It's no secret. This is the game that got Mike Stoops let go by Lincoln Riley last year. They scored 45 points, still didn't win the game. Here's that third down completion. Eagles is able to reach across for the first down, and OU is going to give them those hitches all day long here with only 325 left. Ellinger surveys, flag on the play. Epps was the intended receiver. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense number 55. The 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic, first down. It's Kenneth Mann. Mann was working up the field right here, and then he just gets up into the face mask of Junior Ongalau. There's that hand, you can see it, plain as day. That's where the flag comes out. And now Texas is in business here with 320 left. First down to the 49. Ellinger delivers far side. Nice throw. Great catch to his tight end, Cade Brewer. In a two-possession game, what you're trying to do is set a benchmark for when you want to score. You're creating a sense of urgency, even for that first series when you need to go get a touchdown. You'd like to score with about two minutes left, maybe 2.30 left. So they'll be trying to go quick. Sam Ellinger drops it off underneath. Johnson. And another great open field tackle. This time it's Buki. Bradley Hiles does a great job there getting Johnson to the ground, and that'll force the clock to run as it wasn't a first down. Five yard pickup, second and five. And Ellinger sacked for the eighth time in this game. Marquez Overton, Marcus Stripling. And just a simple move up front for Overton, and now nine sacks the most for any Lincoln Riley coach team. They have been absolute monsters up front. Sam Ellinger in trouble again. Ellinger breaks a tackle, and it's caught by Duvernay, but a flag. And this may be roughing the passer. Kenneth Murray, the linebacker, was the foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number nine. The 15 yard penalty. First down. Here's Murray. He's closing fast as Ellinger gets rid of the football. I'm interested to see if they would take another look at that.
The play on first and ten at the 17. Ellinger, time not on his side. And he'll just throw it out of bounds. Kenneth Murray make it Kenneth Mann with pressure. Mike Pereira on that last roughing the passer. I thought that they might look at that and maybe instigate a targeting from replay. What do you think? Yeah, I, initially I didn't like the call because he's on the run. I thought it was shoulder, but when you see it, he does get him with the crown of the helmet. He is defenseless. Remember, the crown is anything above the face mask. So I'm a little bit surprised I didn't stop it and look, and look at that. Second and ten of the 17. Ellinger over the middle, caught Epps, and he's down inside the Oklahoma five for a 13-yard gain. Bradley Hiles with the tackle. They've done exactly what I was suggesting, try to get down here with around two minutes to go, and they'll snap it quick. Ellinger running it with a hole. Touchdown, Texas. Ellinger's second rushing touchdown of the day. Well, when in doubt, give it to number 11. Guy's a battering ram. Listed at 230, probably a bit heavier than that. And just runs right through the tackle of Deshaun White, number 23. Took him on from the side. Extends, keeps his body up off the field. Gets the goal line. And Texas is within a possession. What a series there from Ellinger. How about Ellinger displaying some toughness? Sacked nine times, getting hit right in the chops by Kenneth Murray and just coming back and coming back and coming back, driving his team down for the score. Extra point by Dicker is good. A minute and 49 to go. Sam Ellinger refusing to quit, continuing to fight. Texas the hat on the line. Here's the onside kick. Takes a high pass. Texas just couldn't track it down. Eagles had a beat on it. Watch Brennan Eagles, number 13. He tries to spin around the outside to avoid that kind of initial block from Oklahoma, but can't quite locate the ball. It took the right bounce for Tom Herman, and he just wasn't able to corral it. Oh, my goodness. That looked like it was opening up perfectly for Texas. You don't normally see something open up like that on an onside kick, but now they've got to sell out. Texas has got to sell completely out. 149 to go. Texas with two timeouts. Oklahoma with one. From the 46. Suiters. Stay on the ground, Kennedy Brooks. And a look at our Gatorade. Make that Outback clutch delivery. Outback Steakhouse clutch delivery highlight is all about C.D. Lamb. C.D. for the T.D. all day for Lincoln Riley. This dude has been absolutely great. Short passes, however they've been able to get him the ball. He's been so dangerous as a run threat. Ten catches so far today. That's a career high for him. He's only the third player in Red River history with three receiving touchdowns. Only second player in Red River history with 170 receiving yards and three touchdowns. The other was D.D. Westbrook back in 2000. And 16, so some rarefied air for C.D. Lamb, our Outback Steakhouse clutch delivery highlight of the game. Second down and six. 1.45 to go. Jalen Hurts runs it, looking for the first down and has it. Did a nice job allowing his blocks to develop and gains 10 yards on the play. Injured Longhorn. And that's Juwan Mitchell. 
And let's take a look at the road ahead for Oklahoma. Brought to you by Coors Light. Made the chill. Remember to celebrate responsibly. And OU will take on West Virginia at home next week. Partner, you and I, Jenny Taft, will be there on Fox. And then at Kansas State, a place that historically has at times given them trouble. Iowa State at home. Remember, it was just a couple of years ago that Matt Campbell's Iowa State team went into Norman and beat the Sooners. Then number 22, Baylor who is having a resurgent season under Matt Rule, TCU, and then Bedlam on November 30th for OU, rounding out Big 12 play. A minute and 38 to go in the fourth. Boy, I got to tell you, I've, I've been really so impressed with OU's ability to play complimentary football. Their defense had to carry them through a stretch where their offense wasn't hitting on all cylinders. And then when they needed it most, the run game showed up. Hurts made some great plays. Jalen Hurts, even with a couple of mistakes, is out here throwing for 235 and three tugs, run the ball for 131, over seven and a half a pop. You know, Hurts has been tremendous today, Gus. He really has, even though he made a couple of mistakes early. And Hurts. And the Sooners in the victory formation. He takes a knee. And the clock continues to tick. Some interesting events taking place here in week seven of the college football season. We saw not too long ago Clemson take it to the wire in overtime against North Carolina. Georgia facing a tough South Carolina team today. You wonder what happened in that game. Well, right now, let's go to Sam Farber for an update. Yeah, number three, Georgia able to force overtime against South Carolina. Down three in second OT. Rodrigo Blankenship misses from 42 out. And number three, Georgia is unbeaten. No more. Falls 20 to 17. Wow. First major upset. Would you say of the season? No doubt about it. Wow. All right, here we go. Buckle up. It's college football. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my goodness. And OU's got to be feeling good about themselves tonight. Although, there's a good chance that man, Lincoln Riley, will have to meet that man, Tom Herman, again in the Big 12 championship later this year. But today in Red River, it's OU staying undefeated. And Gus showing some serious improvement on that defensive side to go along with that explosive offense with C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb, 10 catches, 171 yards and three touchdowns with a long of 51. Jalen Hurts, 16 of 28, 235 yards passing, three touchdowns.